it's time once again for Uncle Matt's Bedtime Story. Hello everybody, it's Uncle Matt and I'm here to read you another bedtime story. And tonight's bedtime story is a sequel to a story that we've read earlier on called The Three Ninja Pigs. Do you remember that story? That was an awesome story. Well, this one is called Ninja Red Riding Hood. And uh, it is written by, let me get it right here. Corey Rosen Schwartz and illustrated by Dan Santat. And here's the cover here, Ninja Red Riding Hood. It was copyright way back in 2014. Are you ready? Here we go. Once upon a time, a ninja filled time, a wolf couldn't catch any prey. He kept getting licked by the dinner he picked and was growing more ticked by the day. His belly was aching for bacon. I'm wasting away, he complained, to huff and to puff was no longer enough. So he snuck into school to be trained. He practiced his katas for hours and mastered the whirlwind and wheel. He jackknifed and flipped and at last felt equipped to once again catch a good meal. Drooling with anticipation, he set off in search of some meat, while deep in the wood he met Riding Hood. I'm bringing my grandma a treat. The wolf licked his chops when he saw her and hastily thought up of a plan. There are blossoms that way you can pick up a bouquet to give your little old gran. Then, the wolf took a shortcut to Grandma's, where he thought that he'd find her in bed. But Granny was gone, so he put her robe on and eagerly waited for Red. Soon after, he heard someone knocking. He called out, my dear, come on in. Oh, don't you look good in your lovely red hood, but a shame that you've gotten so thin. Little Red took a look at her granny and said, What on earth did you do? I could swear that your eyes have completely changed size. Hey, Gran, are you sure that it's you? Of course it is me, my sweet darling. The better to see you, my dear. And your ears are so long, something really seems wrong. Oh, my girl, all the better to hear. <sighs> and those biceps, my gosh, they look massive. And your triceps and delts are immense. The better for hugging, her grandma said, shrugging. Dear Red, that's just plain common sense. And those teeth, they look so much sharper. Why, yes, all the better to chew. He jumped out of bed to gobble up red. But... Ah, get ready. She'd gone to ninja school, too. She grappled 
and sideswiped and twisted and escaped from his clutches unscratched. She attempted a lock, but he managed to block. They appeared to be evenly matched. Just then, they both heard someone chopping. A woodsman? Red thought, but instead, it was Gran in her gi. She'd just come from Tai Chi. Don't you dare harm a hair on her head. The wolf took a swing at that instant, but Red deftly dodged the attack. She got a good grip, threw him over her hip, and the wolf wound up flat on his back. I'll skedaddle, the wolf said in anguish as he shrugged and struggled back up on his feet. Just a second, you beast, you will not be released till you promise to give up red meat. Though his tummy still rumbled with hunger, the wolf faced his rival and bowed. Ninja Red, you have won. My meat days are done. Oh, Red Chan, said Gran, I'm so proud. Then Red and the wolf bowed politely, and Gran gave him half her peach pie. I had peach pie recently. The wolf was a mess. He had way too much stress. I guess I'll give yoga a try. He enrolled at Dong... He enrolled at Downward Dog Center, where his tension began to decrease. He studied with yogis, said no to meat hoagies, and felt at last truly at peace. That's the end. Well, good for Red, good for Gran, and good for the wolf. That is all the time we have for Uncle Matt's bedtime story. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.